I've been flying for over 20 years and test flying for the last 10, during which I have the opportunity to fly more than 50 aircraft types. I'm lucky to be one of the few who gets to fly some of the world's most interesting and advanced aircraft. But what we're doing here is the coolest thing I've done, and I'm so excited to be involved in the development of electric aviation. Everyone, it's my absolute pleasure to be here today to talk to you. I am Andy Larkman, the Chief Test Pilot of Heart Aerospace. Um, I'm here to kind of connect to the previous speakers, looking at how we actually use this emerging technology for our data gathering and analysis and, and how we apply that to some of our, our specialist equipment in the air. Uh, to get through these testing, um, obviously we need to be quite experienced. Um, so my background is actually, as you can see, in the military uh, initially. Uh, and uh, technology, like me, has advanced a little bit uh, over the years. And uh, I spent about 20 years in the military, the first half flying operationally maritime patrol airplanes, surveillance aircraft, uh, which of course had a lot of technology. Uh, I then became a test pilot graduating from the, the French test pilot school on exchange. Then I moved into specializing in, in heavy aircraft uh, tests. Uh, I've been a civilian now for about five years and the last two years of that I spent at Heart Aerospace. Uh, really lucky to have flown uh, you know, over three and a half thousand hours now and uh, I think I'm getting near 60 different aircraft types uh, Thanks to adding a few additional ones here. Um, enough about me, I guess. Uh, aviation, Gothenburg. Any ideas where maybe Gothenburg started? Well, here it is. 1938, uh, the shipbuilders actually, they had a go. And uh, they, they built this uh, Jotterwerken GV38 aircraft. And I have to say they did a great job because uh, it's actually still flying today. And I had the pleasure to actually fly it, making it the oldest aircraft I've ever flown. And I really hope one day we get the chance to fly it alongside the newest aircraft in the Gothenburg area, which is what we're developing. It's the ES-30. It's a 30-passenger 30, uh, 30 hybrid electric aircraft. It's the only brand new large class airplane actually being developed and certified in Europe. And we believe actually the entire world at the moment. So we really are pioneering this. So it's obviously not just me. Who are the people behind this? Well, Heart Airspace, it was actually founded in 2018 as a research project, uh, and then it just grew and grew. It's, it is a Swedish company. It is based here in Gothenburg. We have our headquarters at Semcon, just down the road. Uh, we also have our uh, hangar with some of our testing facilities uh, up in uh, Save Airfield nearby. As I say, the company's grown and uh, we have many investors and partners now. Uh, a couple just to highlight, we have uh, Breakthrough Energy Ventures, which were actually uh, from uh, Bill Gates. And uh, more recent investors such as Air Canada and uh, homegrown Swedish aviation itself in, in Saab Aerospace. So before we fly, we have to test, just like you saw in the automotive uh, industry. You know, certifying aircraft, it's, it's hugely complicated, uh, a theme we've, we've heard already today. And uh, we have a lot of work to do to get ready for that first flight, and it takes, uh, it takes quite a few years. Um, and I think someone asked me earlier, why do we have test pilots when the aircraft's not going to fly until 2026? Well, you know, we're already engaging and supporting in the design phase, uh, helping with things such as uh, designing the, the, the cockpit, <laughs> my office. Uh, we're advising on the safety engineering and we're helping to develop things like the flight control systems, which are very important for the handling of the aircraft. And we're already starting to develop our, our very comprehensive uh, flight test plans. We're doing this at the same time as actually we're establishing a, a brand new cutting edge flight test center here in Sweden. We're doing all this so that when it comes time to test, we can execute those complex test procedures in an efficient manner. So we can analyze the huge amounts of data and then package all this up into the evidence that it's required to give to the regulatory authorities and actually certify and prove the airplane is safe. But you know, despite all these challenges, uh, you know, test and certification, it is essential to the safety and reliability of aircraft. Uh, and it's on us as the aviation industry to keep pushing the bounds of this and make sure that it's safe for you as the passengers. 
So what do we do with the, the, the flight test? There are many phases to go through, and I unfortunately don't have enough time to talk about everything on the slide there. But the main key focus is that, you know, like I said, it's complex. We have something like 30,000 individual test points to perform, an average of between five and six minutes per test point. The aspects that we're looking at when we do these firstly is safety. We're looking at the performance of the aircraft, how it handles, how the systems interact and work with each other on board the aircraft, and how reliable it is. And then finally, we, we then have to show the regulator, which is EASA, that the aircraft is compliant and safe. We do this through our testing approach. It's not just a case of uh, me, the test pilot, jumping in and having a go and uh, being amazing. <laughs> uh, in fact, it's, it's done very safely. Um, we have a very specific approach to how we do this and, and a cycle, as you can see on the bottom of the slide there, uh, using a, a combined team. We need to look at all the requirements. We need to analyze those and then plan each individual test sortie starting from the ground up. So we start with rig, ground testing, we build up to the first flights. We then expand the envelope of the aircraft, taking it to the edges of its capability. While we're doing that, we're looking at the systems, the avionics testing, and then we're actually starting to bring the certification testing in an early stage, having the regulator riding alongside us as we do it to get towards that certification approval. And as I said earlier, you know, we've got 30,000 plus test points to, to organize, problem solve. So we need a revo very robust data management system that's gonna, gonna help us do that. And, and that's where we're using the same technology that the guys were talking about earlier to create that system in-house to make sure that we can fit every possible bit of data efficiently into every test sortie so we can then analyze that sometimes in real time during the flight and I'll show you some of that later then store and uh, ultimately report on all that data. So what about the aircraft itself? So we're going to use prototype aircraft. We have uh, flight test instrumentation. This is the specialist equipment that we use as testers and put on board the aircraft. Again, I'm not going to take you through the slide. Just to say that we need to prioritize the safety during all of these flight test sorties. You know. And um, we actually have to conduct a lot of different tests. So we have more than one prototype, all configured in different ways to do this. This is a kind of an example of the, the first prototype we're going to have. Uh, it have a, a lot of the, uh, the complex equipment fitted to it. And I'm just going to take you through, you know, some some pieces of, of of that equipment and explain in more detail. But I have to say, actually, it's it's not just the aircraft that gets modified, but actually the pilot ourselves. We get fitted with all sorts of uh, flight test instrumentation as well. And and I do remember John, you know, talking there about aviation. I have actually done some flight tests with with the same technology that that Smart are using, and and I can really attest to to how beneficial it is to us when we're doing testing. Um, I actually used it when I was doing some testing for uh, for nighttime tactical landings in transport airplanes. Uh, just as an aside, you might notice um, there's a lot more orange appearing in my presentation. Um, everything flight test is orange. Uh, sometimes we even wear orange. So you'll, you'll get to see that through the rest of the presentation to, to depict what's actually flight test and what's normal aircraft. Before we get into equipment, let's talk about the team. So we've got the FT, the flight test engineer. Uh, he's at the core, actually, of, of the testing. He's there to look through the test risk, working alongside the pilot, develops and executes the uh, the test plans. And you know, when we land, he may be on board the aircraft, for example, or on the ground, then has to evaluate everything and then report on it and problem solve. Assisting him, we have the, the flight test instrumentation engineers. They're the guys who actually source, design this equipment. They install it. They have to calibrate it. They have to constantly monitor it, adapt it, maintain it, and then also report on it for the regulators. And of course, we have the test pilot. Uh, we're there to support the flight test engineer, do what he tells us. Fly, uh, fly all the test points, but really, you know, make sure we've got good safety of flight when we're doing the testing. And then it's really important that we have a, 
a robust method of reporting the feedback once we've done the testing. So every person on that crew plays a very vital role for the aircraft development, but it's not just us. We've got an entire team on the, greens, uh, on the ground supporting us. What about the actual equipment? So let's talk about truth data to start with. How do we know the aircraft's going the speed it says it does? Well, we don't to start with. So we, we have things such as the pitot boom, boom here. So this actually sticks out in front of the aircraft, away from any disturbed airflow to give us accurate readings in speed and angular data. We can also do it at the rear, and we have a trailing cone gets wound out from the back, and that can also measure. But we have all these domains in the company who need to come together to help us do that. Another great system for flexibility for us is the ballast system. What we can do is while in the air, we can actually move water or even fuel from these tanks from perhaps the front to the back or left to right in the aircraft, allowing us to change the center of gravity and the balance of the aircraft for when we're doing specific test points. And it allows us to do it quickly without landing and changing and having to use old fashioned uh, sandbags, of course in orange. Getting a bit more exciting now. Um, yeah, quite a dramatic looking uh, test point there with the sparks flying from the aircraft. This is something we have to do. We have to see what the minimum speed the aircraft can actually get airborne. And of course, I don't want to, to damage the aircraft, so we fit the tail skid to the back. The tail skid itself is also uh, heavily instrumented to allow the pilot to perform the maneuver safely and the engineers to analyze that data. Kind of building up getting a bit scarier now. Um, yeah, we test the aircraft to the extremes. So we have to have a means of saving the airplane. So we use the, the, the tail chute or the spin chute. It's a device you can see circled there on red at the back of the aircraft. The idea is I lose control of the airplane. I can deploy this drag device. And you can see there's a NASA research airplane there on the right showing uh, how it's now suspending the aircraft. Then what we do is we, we then cut it away, allowing the pilot to regain control of the airplane and survive for another day. Not always the case. Uh, you know, um, Some airplanes, you may have an ejector seat, which is great, but large airplanes we tend not to, so we need to figure out a way of letting the actual crew escape. So we fit bespoke uh, escape systems and, and blow out hatches on the aircraft so that we can provide a safe means for them to evacuate during some of those high-risk uh, test flights that we do. So uh, let's have a look at an example of how all this will kind of come together. I'll just take you around this slide first so you know what's happening. Um, so this is a flight test instrumentation trace um, from the ground station. Uh, so there's a still there. Up here, we've got some information about where the flight controls are. The green is actually the stick, so that's the center position, and this represents the pedals. The pilot already will have the... Um, controls set in a manner to deliberately put the airplane into a spin. It's an alpha jet, which is uh, a fighter jet trainer. It's got a uh, pilot in the front, a flight test engineer in the back, and we do have ejector seats, which is nice. On the top, we've got all the engine, engine instruments and some uh, extra data about the mass and the fuel on board, center of gravity. The main thing we're interested in for the data is here. These are all traces of control positions and, of course, the pitch, the roll, and the yaw of the aircraft. And we analyze what that's doing in the spin and what happens in the recovery. But my favorite bit is over here. This is the altitude bar. And this will come down as we fly. And there's different colors. And as the pilot, I'm in the cockpit. And I know when I hit these altitudes, I have certain actions to make. And the, the best one is definitely at 10,000 feet. And all I have to do is pull the handle and use my exploding chair to save myself. Uh, Thankfully, never had to do that. And it's not just us on board. Like I said, we've got the telemetry people helping us on the ground, extra safety pilots helping monitor me, air traffic control, rescue services on standby, and quite often we have the media there watching as well. So let's see what happens. <laughs> test crew preparing. There's the test pilot in orange. External cameras watching the spin develop. And the pilot's now fighting with the controls, trying to get into a nice, smooth spin. Being tossed into what he's doing and trying to count how many times he's going around. 
Now on the ground you can see all the data now starting to appear on the screen and the altitude going down. Then the pilot puts in the uh, recovery actions and hopefully the airplane comes out of the spin without too much trouble. So you can see there, there's quite a lot that actually gets put together to test these airplanes. And you know they, they don't look anything like what you'd imagine a passenger airplane to look like, for example. So, you know, to safely and efficiently bring a new aircraft uh, to the market, it's hugely complex effort, like we've been saying, and it does require a lot of emerging technologies. Uh, but more importantly, you know, for us, it's not just about the technology and, and, and the test crew doing that job. It's actually about the whole entity. And for us, you know, in our company, it's actually really important that every single employee has a part to play in the safety. And that also comes with the development of a, of a company-wide safety culture. And that's ultimately what's keeping us safe in the air. And this is why having the right people you know, at, at the center of our program is so important to us. Today, we have approximately 200 people from about 30 different nationalities, with so much diversity and experience, proven track record of building regional aircraft people from other industries with experience of electric vehicles. And of course, bringing startups all the way up to industrialization. However, you know, to make our aircraft a reality, this is not enough. And in fact, we need to expand our excellent diverse team. And that's why we want to share our vision with people like you so that you can come and join us. And if your phone's not as good as mine, Of course, we'll give you an opportunity to come and chat to us later. I'm just going to leave you with some the final words uh, from our very own flight test instrumentation engineer, Guilherme. And in fact, he's here with some members of our team, and we'd love to take some uh, some questions or conversations with you after the presentations. Thanks very much. <laughs>